Hi, Papa. You just gonna chill there? Okay. I'm gonna chill there. I hate intros. Hi, guys. I'm Brie. And today, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my breast explant story. <sighs> Let's get started. Why am I doing this? It started off one day that I went to the airport. I got really nauseous. All of a sudden, I had vertigo and the floor was moving like this and I couldn't get on my flight, obviously. I'm like, oh, like just a little dizzy spell. Maybe it's my ears. So I started going to the doctors and getting tests and all these things. No one was giving me answers and I'm like, what is going on with me until I was diagnosed with a whole bunch of things like migraines. I was diagnosed with BPPV, with PPPD, like all these <laughs> crazy things. And I was like, there's something, something wrong. There's something happening. One day I was like, it has to be my implants. Just because two years ago, I had some blood work done and it came back that I had an autoimmune disease. When that started, I was already invested into the breast implant illness. And one of the, the side effects of getting implants was developing an autoimmune disease. And I had already developed it. So back then I had scheduled my, my explant and I didn't go through with it because I was like, oh, whatever, I'm, I'll be fine. And then until this year, I felt like I was in my deathbed. Day five of a really bad headache. I am putting heat and cold on my forehead. I'm so much pain. I need to get this out. And if it's not it, then I really don't care, but I don't need them anymore. So some of the symptoms that I started having were dizziness, nausea, food sensitivities, noise sensitivity, light sensitivity, migraines, neck pain. What else do I have? fatigue, brain fog, memory loss, muscle pain and weakness, dry hair, skin itching, weight problems, inflammation, insomnia, dry eyes, vertigo, throat clearing, reflux, night sweats, candida. Just keeps going, holy shit. Ear ringing, heart palpitation, food intolerance, low blood pressure, depression, anxiety and panic attacks, Hashimoto's, so Hashimoto's is basically your body is attacking your thyroid. My body's always like in a fighting state. That would also cause me to gain weight out of nowhere and then lose it. I would be 131 a week or two and then the next I could be at like 136, 138 and I would feel really swollen on my face and I had no idea why. It's also really hard to diagnose someone with breast implant illness there's a lot of tests but to be honest a lot of people that feel these symptoms like once they get them out they feel so much better the moment that they get out of surgery most of them do so there are chemicals in our implants it's not just silicone saline that make up the implant and a lot of people don't know that and just to name a few there are neurotoxins, carcinogens inside of it. There's even a chemical that is made out of acetone. Like, we have acetone in our implant. Like, what? It's kind of gross. This is only a few of them. This is crazy. There's so much more. We have aluminum. I have printing ink inside of me. The toxic tits. That is disgusting. Zinc oxide. Talc. Stupid. This shit makes me feel stupid for getting this. Like I'm excited, but so scared at the same time. Two more days. Ah! I was living with these things for like almost 10 years and I'm gonna be a totally different person after it. Hopefully healthier. I am gonna be healthier actually. But Put it out there in the universe the way i found my surgeon was through a facebook group it's a breast implant illness group i kept seeing dr rankin dr rankin dr rankin and he's so good and this and that and i really started like digging into his practice and seeing who is this guy and 
he's in Florida, like this is crazy, like he's right here. We're going to Miami. I ended up going to a consult with him and immediately I felt so at peace. Like he gave me that peace of mind, like, oh, this is normal. Like, yeah, we're gonna get them out. And he actually doesn't implant anymore. He only explants because he actually believes in breast implant illness. It took me almost three years to actually go through with this. So it's kind of crazy. I think I was in disbelief. Like, oh, I don't have this. Like, I'm fine, I'll be fine. I actually wanted to redo them because I'm not happy with them. And I'm like, why am I gonna redo them? Like, no. Couple days before my surgery, I'm over here asking myself, am I doing the right thing? He creates your breast into a natural shape. My friend went to him and her breasts look amazing. They look like she has implants. So he, he forms them in a way with your own breast tissue to make them look like you have an implant. And if you're not happy, he goes in six months later and he fat grafts. So he grabs fat from an area of your body. I don't know where exactly it is, but and he injects them into your breast. So the reason why I got implants originally was because I wasn't happy and I also was looking to look apart, I guess, because of the Colombian culture. Everything was appearance and I felt like I didn't fit in. And I got it when I was 18 years old, which is super young. I flew to Colombia, kind of sad, that I went all the way to Colombia to do my breast implants. <laughs> really sucks that everyone has to feel like they have to look a certain way and then they get these things and then they feel like shit. It's sad because a lot of it has to do with impressing a man, honestly. I mean, obviously, don't get me wrong, like, implants look really nice, like, but what's the point of looking nice if you feel horrible at the end of the day? And you're, you're also exposing yourself to getting cancer as well. There's so many girls that are now getting breast cancers and all these types of cancers and diseases because of an implant. So I honestly just want to share the story because the 18 year old Brie didn't know better and I wish I would have loved myself a little more and not have to feel that pressure of looking a certain way. I just want to send the message honestly to love yourself. There's no need for you to put a foreign object in your body to feel better like, I've told so many friends that they've come to me and they're like, I don't want implants. I'm like, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Please don't because I feel like I'm dying right now because of them. <laughs> so I'm actually leaving tomorrow to Florida. Hey, it's the day before the surgery. It is almost game time. I am packed and ready to go. <sighs> and... I'm actually really, really nervous to get on a flight because it's like, oh my God, it's happening. And also when I'm on a flight, my vertigo sparks up. So fingers crossed that nothing happens to me because it'll be the worst flight. <laughs> yeah, hopefully on the way back, I don't have to worry about that. So that's that. I am gonna go pack for this flight make sure to stay tuned because i am definitely going to do a part two and yeah just pretty much give a little recap of how i'm feeling after out of surgery everything went well so thankful i wish you would have got groomed today <laughs> yeah, he's not camera ready he's not kimbo hey kimbo good night okay bye